You're baptized children of God. Jesus loves you. And he loves those people that, that you love, who used to come with you to church, but you don't see so much anymore. Prophet Jeremiah gave this beautiful promise to, to parents at the time of the exile. He promised that, that your children will return. Like they're going to come back to Jerusalem. And that time of exile would only be for a time. They will come back. And for a few weeks now, we've been looking at and wrestling with this thought, well, what about the people that we love who used to come to church with us? Will they come back? What hope do we have? And today I want to look at, well, what can we start to actually think about doing? What sort of plan? Are there some steps we can start putting together for actually approaching a, an adult child, you know, a, a brother who's been away from the church for decades, a friend that you haven't seen, maybe 12 years at church? Are there some things that we can put into place as far as a plan to approach them. Before looking at some things to do, I want to start with some things to not do. Don't criticize them. They're probably expecting that. And one of the reasons that people don't come to church is that they think it's it's too judgmental. And that might be a, a total misconception that they have and we certainly need to, to hear what we're doing wrong. It's good for us. It's healthy for us. Um, but don't criticize them. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen, listen. Now don't nag them. So don't criticize them. Also, don't nag them. Don't just... Uh, come up to them every once in a while and, and again and again and again. So are you going to come back to church? Are you coming back to church? Are you coming back to church? You know, some people come back to church. I go to church or these people go to church. My other son, he keeps coming to church with this. Don't nag. Don't nag them about it. So don't criticize them. They're expecting to be judged. Don't nag them. That's also just pure law about what they're doing wrong. Don't nag, don't criticize, and don't dismiss any objections that they bring up. So what we do want to do is listen. We've talked about that in some of the previous videos, to, to listen, to hopefully hear what, what has really kept them away from church. Listen, listen, listen. And, and when they bring up their objections, don't dismiss them, even if they're totally wrong. Maybe they say, well, the church is just totally judgmental. And you recognize that it's not. It's all about grace. The law and gospel work together in this beautiful way so that we get to the point of comfort and forgiveness. They might be totally wrong with their objection. Don't dismiss it. So don't criticize them. Don't nag them. And don't dismiss their objection. There might be some kernel of truth to their objection. Just listen, listen, listen. A helpful parable to try to keep away from these things, the, the nagging, the criticizing, the dismissing, is the parable of the sower. He goes out and he sows his seed. And some falls along the path and the birds eat it up and some falls on the, the rocky soil and it grows up quick, but then it burns out. And some grows uh, among the weeds and it grows up, but the weeds choke it out. And then some grows on, falls on the, the, the good soil and it grows. And that growth, that growth is going to be 60 fold, 100 fold of what was sown as Jesus says in that parable. But think about the growth, of the seed in the ground. If it's going to be sustainable, it's going to be slow, steady. It's going to need water. It's going to be need to be cared for. 
It doesn't need to be nagged, criticized, dismissed. Simply sow the seed. Let them see the treasure that Jesus is. This might increase or reignite their, a, a desire that, and, a, and a love that they used to have for Jesus. But the criticizing, the nagging, the dismissing of uh, their objections about coming to church, even if they're totally wrong, totally misguided, even if they're missing the point, and they probably are, if they don't want to come and receive Jesus, there's something that they're missing. And what they're missing is the treasure that Jesus is. This is the biggest point of the, the whatever plan we're going to come up with over the weeks ahead, of things to actually do. You want your kids, your brother, whoever it is, you want, you, you want them to see the treasure of Jesus. So don't nag, don't criticize, don't dismiss, but pray again and again, help me see, help me let them see the treasure that Jesus is. Let them see the treasure of Jesus. Let them see that through me, through my growth. You know, if they have some objections to coming to church, one of them might be that, well, it's just a bunch of hypocrites and people don't do anything. They don't get better ever. And as Christians, we ought to be growing. You know, I should look at myself and say, have, have I grown at all in my faith? Has there been any visible sorts of change that has occurred in my life? Have I become more patient? Have I stopped worrying? Have I stopped being so judgmental and avoided gossip? And, and maybe your kids, your brother, your coworker, your neighbor, maybe those people who haven't seen the inside of a church in decades have been seeing you. And have they seen anything worthwhile? Calling them back and inviting them back is going to require a, a call to repentance for each of us. We want them to change. Have they seen any change in us? So don't nag them. And maybe that'll be a change that they'll start to notice. Don't dismiss their objections. And, and if you stop dismissing their objections, maybe they'll notice that change. You know, don't criticize them. Maybe they'll notice that change. And maybe there'll be a chance then for you to, to share the treasure that Jesus is. Spend some time with the parable of the, the sower in Matthew 13, Mark 4. These are places where you can find that parable. Pray on that. Pray that you would refrain from nagging, criticizing, dismissing, but that you would get a chance to simply scatter some seed. Jesus loves you.